In World War I, the commanders faced a challenge on a scale that no one had ever faced before. They had to coordinate vast numbers of men across a huge battlefield with very primitive communications. And I'm going to get a sense of that challenge today, and my battlefield is London. We've set up a game with an army of volunteers. Our base is HMS President. This ship served in World War I and is now moored on the Thames. I have a team of 26, but my team aren't allowed to use any modern communications, just like the armies of World War I. The other team is led by fellow historian Susanna Lipskin. OK, first up, let me learn everybody's names. She has a team of just eight, but her team have a huge advantage. They can use mobile phones. David. We're going to compete in a strategic challenge, and we're about to be given our instructions. Aha! Let's go! Let's do it! Come on, team, let's find out what's going on here. OK, so there's the horn. Let's see what we've got from Nathan. Your task. Find the targets wearing red with the following symbol. We'll give each of them a playing card. Diamonds. Nice. Take those. <laughs> so somewhere in central London, there are people wearing these T-shirts. We have to find them and get the cards to them. I've no idea how we're going to do this yet, but let's have a think. Right, this is London. Um, the search area is pretty big. <laughs> From Waterloo down to Southwark and uh, right up here, right almost to King's Cross, it looks like. So let's all spread out along here and simply push north, trying to stay, broadly speaking, in a line so that we all get to this road at about the same point. If, one's, if one person sees someone in red, shouts, and hopefully visually, because obviously that's all we have. We should have a code word, which is what they had in the First World War. So we just go, boop, whoop. OK. <laughs> <laughs> OK, come on, let's try. Team, boop, whoop, whoop. If you're happy to Susanna's out, team have no need for silly noises. They can just get out there and search. You've got the number. Keep in touch, and I will send you instructions. If I need you to do something specifically, I'll call you. Yes. Okay. Feeling strong. We're going to win. OK, Here go, right. The battle run, is on. <laughs> if everything goes wrong, which it probably will, I'll see you back here at 11.45. At least they're not shooting at us, everyone. It really is a little bit like World War I. In fact, it's a little bit like the first day of the Somme, where you send out guys in long lines, because that's the only way that I can see of organising everyone, keeping everyone uh, focused on the task, um, because if you, if you let everyone break up, you lose all control. Right. What are you doing here? Because I'm in command. Oh, are you just leaving man. that vacant, are you? I believe in leading from the front. See you later. Good luck. Morning, team. So we will put like the people who got the playing cards strategically. Yeah, exactly. To be like one Brilliant. person with no playing cards, one now. person with playing cards. Okay, perfect, but perfect. Yeah. We've been playing this game now for about five minutes and I've learned several very important lessons. One is that every single plan you make completely collapses the minute you try and implement it in the field. We're meant to all be in a big line and start together. That's just not happening. I can't see anyone else. I've got no contact with the people with the cards. The other thing I've learned is if you're in a position of uh, leadership, which I am, I've completely isolated myself here. I've got no cards, I've got no phone, I've got no way of being in touch with anyone. I have no idea how the rest of the team is doing. It's 12 minutes past 11. At Somerset House, got my card. Uh, I'm completely separated from my team. There's no communication. I can't check out all the side streets. Whilst I'm attempting to lead from the front, Susanna is coordinating her search teams from base. We're walking along the Strand, says Laura. Okay, so she's here. Queen Street gone north, now heading east. Laura's telling me she's going east of Blackfriars Bridge. Laura, please go head west. <laughs> Predictably enough, I haven't found any targets. What about the rest of my team? Okay. Did you find any people though? No. Oh my god. I think your plan sucks. I know it sucks. <laughs> Have you did you give any cards to anyone? Yeah, we lost a guy and we didn't give any cards. <laughs> We've lost it. We've lost a member of the team. We've handed out no cards. We are way behind schedule. And I've got no idea what anyone else on the wider team is doing. That's the situation. We've got our first one. We've got a card. 
Brilliant, that's Mel, congratulations. So, my first plan has ended in chaos. At least I had told everyone to meet back at the boat, which might just give me a second chance. OK, everyone, how do we do? Who, how many cars do we give away? None. 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 Right, OK, plan B. Time for plan B. Gather around, everybody. I'm going to stay here with some cards. I mean, each team can have, like, an HQ somewhere. I suggest here so that they can signal me and I can signal them, and then you just conduct mini patrols like that. If I need to find you, I will send a runner, or I will come and find you. No, we just need people out. We can't afford for me to have a runner here. I'll come find you. Northwest over here. Northwest over there, northeast over here. My team are off, leaving me with nothing to do but wait nervously. I'm here at headquarters in my big chateau, like the World War Generals, and it's pretty isolated. But at least here, I am in visual contact with a couple of the teams, and they know where they can find me. So that if they need more cards, I've got them in my pocket. Taking one down. You've, you've got one. Enemy. You've got one. Near uh, Charing Cross Station. Nice work, man. Put it here. That's awesome. I've got there. You go. I've got that. I've got. got that's my only one. card. Yeah. Okay. No. Well, I'm going to make it count. Okay. Good luck. All right. See you in a bit. I'd love to say that was part of planning, but that was just a happy accident. <laughs> it's just happened to bump into her. But my luck doesn't last long. I'm about to receive some very bad news. I've got some new orders for you, sir. New orders? What do you mean? New orders, that's a disaster. You can't change, you can't change the mission. <laughs> new... <laughs> oh my goodness. New information. The targets are now wearing blue and have the following symbol. That's a complete disaster. <laughs> First thing to do, summon back that team with the red flag. Foolishly, I didn't keep back any messengers, but I do have a flag. Visual signals were used in World War I, though they had a tendency to draw enemy fire. I can't believe it. The, the, the... As for changes of plan, they're a feature of any battle. In the First World War, of course, uh, people were dying on a titanic scale because of changes and confusions exactly like this. You might have given the artillery a signal and a time to attack one particular target. A piece of information could come in saying, well, that target's now occupied by friendly forces, so you're shelling your own guys. Right, I'm going to have to leave them a note, and I'll have to go and find that group over there. No such problem for Susanna. Just a few texts, and her team is up to date. Hello, Nikki. So we're looking for people in blue now. Did you get, you got that message? Yeah. Okay, great. Okay, thanks, bye. Sometimes I feel that I misunderstood. Fortunately, my Eastern squad has left someone at the meeting point, just where they're supposed to be. I've wasted valuable time, but at least some of my team now have the right information. So it turns out that we're supposed to be looking for blue pigeons of which I've seen two earlier and thought, oh, that's a little odd. <laughs> Not going to blame our fearless leader, but it's not look good. If I can just get the message to the Northwest squad, I might still have a chance. How's it going? You're on a bike, right? Yeah. OK, and you're with this team up here? Yeah. You are going to single-handedly save this entire thing if you deliver that message successfully. Thank you. We might be able to save this situation, and the reason we'd be able to save it is because, luckily, one or two people have stuck to what they were told to do. Now, that might seem ridiculous to them out there, but there's a reason for it. As the commander, I need to know that there is someone at that crossroads and that crossroads there. First World Generals have taken a lot of criticism for rigidity. They would make these plans and then force people to stick to them, even when the circumstances and the facts change. But what this demonstrates is you need that rigidity, otherwise you've got nothing, otherwise it's total anarchy. Susanna, on the other hand, could be flexible, moving resources to where they're needed. And these guys are slightly marooned over here, but I've asked them to head west. This is where we found everybody so far in a certain area. Oh, hold a second. David! Her strategy is soon paying off. Fantastic, well done. 
Well done. That's brilliant. OK, bye. And another. Congratulations. She's just found another one. And because yeah. she can let the rest of her team know about every success, amazing. morale is high. Unlike my team. We haven't found anybody and we've had enough. These are our had enough faces. Targets found, zero. Time, 1.38, mood, dejected. I'm lost, my team's missing. I put this failure down to leadership at the highest level. I've learned a huge amount about what not to do. And I think that's what the general spent the first two years doing as well. World War I came at pretty much the worst possible time it could come out in history, is that the, the size of the battlefield and the scale and the range of the killing weapons had massively expanded, but the general's ability to control events was the same it had been a thousand years earlier. And by the end of the First World War or into the Second World War, the technology of communication has caught up with the technology of killing. So generals are able to actively uh, control a battle even though they're miles away from it. And, and that process has accelerated to the present day where now President Obama can be in the White House watching helmet cams of real-time uh, Special Forces guys going and getting Osama bin Laden. That's how much it's changed. Hi, team. Hey, it's 2 p.m. <laughs> Time is up and everyone has gathered back at base for the final score. So I now have the official results that the number of cards received by Dan's team was one. <laughs> However, the total number of cards given out by Susanna's team was seven. Yeah. I hereby declare the team with communications the winner. Yeah.